Um, so I have today with me Roland Pettis and Gino Harris. You guys want to introduce yourselves, tell them a little bit about you. Uh, Roland Pettis from Midland. Uh, I used to be a councilman. I work at uh, Pittsburgh Public Schools. I am an assistant principal. Used to be a history teacher. Just excited to be here with you guys. Uh, I believe the experience is always better when we have difference of opinions and we can respect each other and come together. So I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. I'm glad you're here, brother. Um, Gino Harris from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Uh, entrepreneur, uh, newly Republican activist, um, and just a child of God. There you go. Amen. So you're Republican and you identify as Democrat. Democrat yep. uh, just for the record, I am completely bipartisan. Um, it wasn't until this time around that I actually cared. I literally felt like it was all in my hands. But after some research and educating myself, I realized we got power. And that's why I want to speak with people on different ends of the aisle. So let's talk about this year's election. Let's talk about this year's yeah, it's important, <laughs> very important election. Very. So we we have, and this is my opinion, we have two individuals that I don't like. I seen somebody had a sign in their yard that said "F them both, 2020." <laughs> how, I'm, how how do you guys feel about the uh, you know the choices that, that that were given between the two? I think for me, it's a it, it's a repeat of 2016. Uh, I am by no means a fan of Trump. Uh, I'm not Biden's biggest fan. Uh, the choices presented to us come from a two-party system, uh, which needs to go away in our American system, but they've legislated themselves into existence. So then that creates the issues that we have, that we're not getting the best candidate for our country. Uh, we may be getting the best candidate to beat each other or for a party, but definitely not for our country. So it makes – I'm very upset about these results. Yeah, um, I agree with that sentiment. I don't think that it's necessarily the best what United States has to offer. Mm -hmm. And honestly, quite frankly, I don't think we've ever really had um, presidential candidates was the best that America had to offer. So it's a, it's a, it's a, system, a systemic uh, situation where, you know, the system's in place, it's dictating. But I think that there is ways to manipulate that system to achieve um, success and what you want out of this type of uh, two-party system. Okay. We'll definitely come back to that. After we speak about both uh, candidates, I would love to hear some strategy when we talk solutions. Absolutely. Um, well, let's, let's go into them. Let's, let's talk Trump. I think one of the hot buttons is, yeah. is Trump racist? Is, is Trump racist? <laughs> uh, to some people, this is obvious. Right. But uh, we, we spoke before. You yes. have a different opinion. So. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. I uh, know Donald Trump is not racist. Um, it's a left strategy to fear bait, fear monger my people into um, uh, staying aligned in uh, allegiance to the Democratic Party. The man isn't racist. If you look at the history of the United States, racist politicians equal racist policies. Right. So you're not going to get a racist in there who is going to enact policies that propel um, a demographic that was racist, I mean, the racist toward a head. Um, for example, um, the uh, First Step Act, which is criminal justice reform, you know, that's the number one racist of a modern era um, topic. And when I say this, it's if you look through history, you know, after slavery, that's why, you know, Kanye says we got to end the 13th Amendment because slavery is still evident through punishment, mm -hmm. okay, which is in this law, mm -hmm. right? So they know that, right? So what they did was they basically, since they lost the slaves in a literal sense, they still had that little clause, you know, right? clause yep. in clause, there yep. that they can, no, 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 we're still going to enslave you. And if you look throughout um, pretty much history, the Democrats have led the way in essentially almost every crime bill or, you know, tough on crime bill. And actually, Joe Biden brags about it. He actually bragged that it's a secret, you know, that the Democrats are behind every crime bill. OK, so if I get this right, you're saying that because Trump, because we make up so much of the prison because the criminal justice 
hurt harms black people so much. The fact that he took action towards it right. makes him not racist. Well, one of one of the things that he took action to. Okay, I mean, there's other laws as you see. You know, um, school choice. Um, you know, the funding for HBC, uh, HBCUs, historic funding, um, and you know the school choices, which enables kids. Mainly, it affects inner city. Um, because they have the, you know, the private schools in inner city that those kids could never go to. Now they they actually have that choice. Now you got your, you know, other people in suburbia that don't really like it because of taxes and things of that nature. But it was designed to break and integrate those better opportunities for the kids in the inner cities. Okay. And uh, you know, Joe Biden in '77 was very anti-integration um, and stopped busing from, you know, impoverished areas to better schools, he was very anti that. And okay. He, we, we could definitely talk about Biden next, but uh, so you're saying Trump's policies make him not right. racist. On a, political, on a political level, I would say, yes, his policies make him not racist as a politician. Okay. Now, if you want to talk about uh, on a personal level, then we'd have to go back to his history. And if you, I don't know if y'all knew... Mm-hmm. But he helped fund uh, Jesse Jesse Jackson in the 80s. And also he donated money to the Rainbow Coalition as well as personal lending. So it's like, I mean, he even dated a black woman for three years publicly. So it's kind of like it's now, again, I'm not going to sit here and dismiss that. I know what his thoughts are. Now, all I can do is basically sit back, analyze from what I see with him being, you know, a out, you know, person of public interest, Mm -hmm. you know, and and that's what I have to base it on. Now, can I sit there and say he's not a racist? I can't make that statement wholeheartedly with conviction because I don't personally know this man. Um, Others like Herschel Walker that do know him have said he's not racist. Um, Don King still sticks with him, you know. Um, You know, that's really not here or there. And to me personally, um, based on that, I can only judge this man from politics, from a political stance. And from a political stance, I would say he's not racist. How you feel? Do you feel like Donald Trump is racist? Now, for me, uh, I would say along the same lines of I don't know his thoughts and I cannot determine that. But after studying the Republican platform, uh, the policies enacted, there are some that are good. I, I give you that. But the policies itself are made to adversely affect people of color. Uh, I sent a clip. Uh, it was Lee Atwater. It was Reagan's uh, chief strategist. And he made a point of saying how after the Democrats signed the voting rights bill that white people were upset about it. So they went to gather these people to become Republicans, become conservatives. So what ended up happening is that the Southern, Southern strategy – some say it's a myth, but out of his own mouth, he said, in the- Here's how I would approach that issue, is, is how abstract you, you handle the race thing. You start out in 1954 by saying nigger, nigger, nigger. By 1968, you can't say nigger. That hurts your backfire. So you say stuff like uh, forced busing, states' rights, and all that stuff. And you're getting so abstract now, you're talking about cutting taxes, and all of these things you're talking about are totally economic things, and the byproduct of them is blacks get hurt worse than whites. And subconsciously, maybe that is part of it. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that if it is getting that abstract and that coded, uh, that, that we're, we're doing away with the racial problem one way or the other. Uh, you follow me? Abstract in regards to the policies in which we say that are going to hurt people of color. When we talk about busing and taxes and states' rights, those are buzzwords or dog whistle politics uh, that adversely affect us. I'm not saying that the, the crime bill, I know about it. You are 100% correct. It has it decimated the African-American community. But to say that uh, he is a racist himself, I can't speak to that. But as a party, there are things that the Republican Party is doing to the, at this very moment that are suppressing our votes, that are uh, disrupting polling places. Uh, it was the so Republican Supreme Court that actually gutted the voting rights bill in 2013. All that is funneling us to have less voting power. And so what happens is, is that uh, I also sent a, di- uh, a diagram of a chart that shows racism and how it manifests. At the very bottom, it is biases, and those biases are implicit. 
Uh, to say that Mexican are rapists and things like that, those are dog whistle politics. He himself may not believe that. I, I'm not going to say he does or he doesn't. But to put that out there to a certain segment of the population who does believe that, uh, he may not be racist, but he's pandering to them. And that sometimes happens to be the base. So I'm not, I wasn't afraid. I took him at his word. So like you said, I looked at his actions. And what I noticed is a president that pits people against each other. Now, is that racist? Not in itself, but when you pit some pit religion against each other, against Muslims or against uh, people. And then I have a tweet here that literally says, the suburban housewife will be voting for me. They want safety and are thrilled that I ended the long-running program where low-income housing would invade their neighborhood. Biden would reinstall it in a bigger form with Cory Booker in charge. Now, I like to highlight that part, Cory Booker, because he's a black senator. So why would that name just pop up for a low income housing, uh, you know, plan that Obama. It it almost reminds me of when uh, when when Trump was interviewing the uh, the Asian woman, yeah. and he said, China. Yes. <laughs> and she said, uh, he said, you should ask China, you should, <laughs> you should ask China about the coronavirus. She's like, wait, why are you telling you know me? Right. So I, I mean, uh, so essentially, it's it. You feel like Trump might not be racist, but because there are biases there, yes. And either he believes it or he doesn't, but he speaks on it, and it fuels a racist side yes. of the country. Well, yes. well, my question to that would be, we got to look at Cory Booker's history, though, because he might actually be involved. I think he's in uh, New Jersey. Where's mm -hmm. he? Out of New Jersey, right? Yeah, New Jersey. So he might actually be involved in the type of housing in his history. Do you, do you know his I do, I, track record? I do not know that. But what, I, what Trump does is, like, for example, when uh, April Ryan asks him, sir, are you a racist? She's a black uh, journalist. He goes, ask your people. <laughs> I'm like, what did he just say? Like, things like that are those biases right. to just assume that she knew all the black congressmen and women right. and senators. You know right, what I mean? Right, because <laughs> he's, he's an elitist. There's yeah. no doubt about yeah. it. Um, we could even argue a lot of times he speaks... He comes off rather pompous. Yeah. Um, but again, uh, you know, he says about housing, you know, Cory Booker, but yet. Yeah, we don't know. You know, in his have. cabinet, who's running HUD. Yeah. Who is he? Yeah. But you know, the irony, of that, the irony of that is that. He's a doctor, right? He's a doctor, a neurosurgeon right. running the housing and urban development. Right. That, that seems a little bit tricky well, you, to me. You know, I think that he, he and I agreed, I think, you know, I don't know why he wasn't like a surgeon general. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that, if the brother who is the surgeon general mm -hmm. at this time under him, if he appointed him that, I don't, I didn't do that yeah, in regards to if he was already there mm -hmm. or did he appoint the young brother. But I think, though, with Ben Carson, he might have put him in there because it was, you know, the urban development Maybe Ben Carson uh, coming from, I think, Detroit, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think maybe it was, um, maybe Ben even wanted that. Yeah, that's possible. Know? That's it's, possible. You know, considering. Mm -hmm. Feeling like he can make some change. Right. Yeah. So, and, so as a, a, a black man mm -hmm. and as a black voter, with the, his, even with his, even if we don't say Trump's racist, right. even with his biases and the way that he divides people from how he speaks, in the small things that he says that just tri he may make me angry and fuel this person to uh, be negative towards me. And the way he divides us, how what what still makes you support him past those things? Like, how can you you know what I mean? Right. I would say, though, um, the, the rhetoric that he speaks and some people take it. It's a lot of times misconstrued. OK, okay? like, for example, the statement, uh, you know, there's good people on both sides. And they try to say that he was referring to neo-Nazis. But if you play the whole, the whole interview, he was not referring to neo-Nazis. He said he was referring to Confederate statue sympathizers who were just there to protest the destruction of the statue and okay. the name, renaming of the Robert E. Lee Park. What about you, 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 your schools are crap. Your, yeah. your, your yeah, communities yeah. are crap. Yeah, yeah. What, do You're the worst. what do you have to lose? Yeah, that was, yeah. you know what? That speech actually gave me chills. And that was actually when I, I ain't felt chills from a politician since Obama, uh, you know, got the, uh, the nomination. Mm -hmm. Right. But he let me down. So Trump but gave Trump, you the feel that Obama Trump, gave. Yes, he did. Honestly, yeah. Yes, he did. I'm, gonna I, I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening to this when one. He, when, he <laughs> said, when he told me that, 
Uh huh. He was actually right. We are. See, the problem is, is like we as black people at the bottom, we 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 want to perceive ourselves as like you know we're not because of the individual basis. See, you can't do that. You can't say, well, that guy succeeded. Well, he represents me. No, 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 no. Collectively, you know, no matter what I do individually, how high I rise. It doesn't matter. My demographic, my community is the same as the, the impoverished. Mm-hmm. So we can't look at it as, yeah, we've gotten black millionaires. We made it. No, we didn't. Collectively, we are at uh, the bottom that's in fair. every topic, mm-hmm. in every, except spending. We're one of the highest in, 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 in buying material goods. You know, and it's like our priorities as a culture, as a community is bad when, you know, our ancestors took hoses, dogs biting them, being killed for education. Look at how we view education in our community today. So, so you're saying because it was the truth. Yes. And because we are behind him saying, him being honest. Yes. I, 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 I guess I, I still have the question of how could him saying, like, what do you, you have, have to, to lose, lose in trying something new? Right. Like, what makes us think just because you tell me I ain't crap. That I should try you. Well, it's not that he's saying, and see, I took it as he wasn't saying we ain't crap because that's the also the only person. Okay, I use the wrong word. No, no, but yeah. I, it's all good, you know, because, uh, you know, that's how you felt when you heard it. And a lot of people can conceive that, right? But what I took it was is that um, he also, that also, keep in mind, is, a, is the only president in the United States that said black people built this country. It's Donald Trump. Okay, but what I took from it was what do you have to lose voting Republican with him, right? Because the thing is, for 60 years, we've been under this democratic uh, change, okay? What has changed, honestly? You go throughout democratic cities like Baltimore, D.C., Chicago, New York. We're, it's terrible for us. It really is terrible, okay? And to me, I took it as, what do you have to lose voting Republican? We've yeah. already thrown 90-something percent of the vote behind this party that does nothing for us. Election in, election out. And Malcolm X even said, Malcolm, yep, and yep. we could play that clip. You can see that the Negro vote is the key factor. And despite the fact that you are in a position to, de- to be the determining factor, what do you get out of it? The Democrats have been in Washington, D.C. only because of the Negro vote. They've been down there four years. And they're all other legislation they wanted to bring up, they brought it up and gotten it out of the way, and now they bring up you. And now they bring up you. You put them first and they put you last. Because you're a chump. A political chump. When you, you know, he even said, if you continue to throw your vote behind a party that lies to you, you are not only a chump, but you are a traitor to your race. Okay. See, now, my, my, the only issue I see with that is that if we did the Democratic cities, I could pick out of the 100 poorest counties, 97 of them are Republican. So I agree with you voting in one block for any group of people, Mm -hmm. for any party is detrimental. But we have a two-party system. And so what's happening, when I heard him say that, uh, I was thinking uh, he is saying that, but there is no real substantial uh, policy. I lost him. And so I think the problem is that people vote – for one party, any party, because even with the poor, poorest white people in those counties, they still vote Republican. And so that's the two party system playing out before our eyes. And I agree with Malcolm X's quote. I agree with you. We do have to switch something. But it's in my opinion, it's not to the Republican Party is to a viable third party that we can rally behind with our conservatives beliefs, with our liberal beliefs. And we as a people can come together to say, we're not going to tolerate this anymore. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I, if I respond to my brother, I, and I, again, I agree with that. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. But see, Roland, you know, you're probably a realist like me mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that happening. That's like, <laughs> right? Yeah. So what do we do? Right. Mm-hmm. This is the game. That we're dealt. That's These right. are, this is what we have. That's right. Right. And the thing about us is we're a very resilient people. Mm-hmm. People, you know, maybe people don't want to admit that, mm-hmm. but we are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you look at our journey, it's very unique. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, what we were up against and what we went through, not too many, even other places of our brothers and sisters that was 
in a similar journey went through the same thing I agree. as us. So the descendant of slaves in America, United States, is a very unique population. I think we should start viewing ourselves as that. I agree. And we can address that later. But So we got this two-party system. It's been here hundreds of years, right? Mm -hmm. What do we do? Mm -hmm. We got to play this game. Mm -hmm. We can't sit there and say, and again, I agree with you. If we could get a new party, <coughs> mm -hmm. you know, absolutely, right? But we, we know that's not going to happen, tough. right? Yep, you're right. You're so right. what do we do? Mm. We got to play this game, brother, and we got to play it to win. And how you do it is by, and, and the thing is, Martin Luther and them gave us the blueprint. Mm -hmm. We were Republican up until Kennedy, and he got Kennedy 80% of the black vote, mm -hmm. right? They swayed that, okay? And Kennedy won, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, Kennedy, he was taking his time, and, you know, he gave us affirmative action, you know, and Malcolm, you know, obviously he is, but he wasn't happy over that, and I don't blame him. But again, it's the blueprint of what we have to do to get things. I agree. And you I have agree. to, now here's the thing, block voting is very powerful. Mm -hmm. It really is. Like if you can get, we're 13% of the population, mm -hmm. if you could get 90% of that, millions of people, mm -hmm. to vote one way, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. That is so much power, you don't even understand it because it's like, you know, you literally, like Malcolm says, uh -huh. decide who goes to the White House and who goes to the doghouse, right? But the problem is, is that we've been, in a sense, allowed, we allowed the Democratic Party after what Martin and them did, and not just Martin, the civil rights leaders, after what they did, we kind of just either forgot it or I don't understand, but it was never meant to allow the Democratic Party to embed itself as a cultural cancer to the point where we don't even know it's hurting us mm -hmm. being loyal to these people. And you know what? I, I, I definitely agree with that, that, that sentiment. The thing is, is I look at the party leadership. So, for example, uh, I don't know if you watched the Democratic Convention. Yeah, yeah. Did you see the diversity? Mm -hmm. So when I see that, to me, just if I turned off their their rhetoric and things like that, right. it shows me I got a chance with that party. And even the roll call vote was different. If you look at how they went around the country and they showed waiters and different things, right. and then the Republican Party, I think 15, 20 in a row, old white men. Right. That party doesn't reflect me. Mm -hmm. So when I look at that, and even, even just to go a step further, like the interns, they showed a picture. It was all white right. People, not one, well, I'm going to say one, it was a couple, right. black people. But then you show the interns and the people for the Democratic Party. So even though we need to shape up and figure out what we need to do as a people, I can say as a person, if I was just looking at face value, because like I go deeper than, right. you know, deeper than the average person because I love politics. Absolutely. But if you look at face value, even if we didn't know any platform, when I look at those pictures, I say, man, that party welcomes me. That party at least will, will show me, help me. Like, I, I think I can feel welcome there. Because, like I said earlier, that talk about us and them and, right. and calling African countries, you know, the, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the names. And I'm just like, that don't sound like it's inclusive. Even if he thought it, he didn't have to say it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And, so, and, and, if I, if I yeah. can respond to you on that, brother. <laughs> You're absolutely right, right? So... Look at the Democratic Party and their, and their conventions. You see black faces, right? You see all this multicolored. But who's really at the top of that? It's still a white man. White people, Yeah, right? and the so, only man that can beat Trump right? is a white man. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So to me, yeah, I see all that. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, slave owners used to do that. Like mm -hmm. a lot of the, you know, the enforcers were black men mm -hmm. on slaves, right? Yeah. So, or in, you also had house slaves as well. They were treated better, right? So- how I look at that is, yeah, you're very inclusive, but what does your policy say, mm -hmm. right? What does your laws pass to say? And it says the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you show people that look like me, but they're bought and paid for. Mm -hmm. Because, obviously, they're not pressing y'all to, to do no criminal justice reform. They're not pressing y'all to do no community uh, enhancement reform. They're gentrifying, but that's just moving us out. Yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not, if you look at their body of work... Mm -hmm. It's not good for us, mm -hmm. but yet they got our vote mm -hmm. constantly, right? Mm -hmm. And they put us up on TV, but they're just paid actors, man. Mm -hmm. 
You know, it's like they say the, the black Republican is, is uh, the Tom and, you know, the coon and, and the get out. How? Mm-hmm. When I don't, I don't sing and dance to no Republican. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of black Republicans, if you look at them, mm-hmm. they're very set in their own ways. And if you look at what they've achieved individually, they're individual agents, mm-hmm. right? So, but when you look at the Democratic Party, man, they all say the same thing. They, when do you really see them go at each other? You don't. Mm-hmm. You know, Pelosi's up there making herself look like a fool. Who's calling her out for that? Wearing African cheeky robes and kneeling. Why do you do that, that was, now? Yep, that you, was a that's pandering. Do, that do you pandering. feel as though the Republican Party holds each other accountable? I think Because I feel like all, both sides do that. Well, I'll tell you yeah. what. Well, I've, I've yet to see. I've seen Republicans come at Trump. Right. I've seen them. Right. But they paid the price for it. See, that's the difference. Where Democrats come after each other and most likely the person that's getting it usually leaves like Al Franken. Mm. They did an ethics investigation. They found out nothing was like no, no, no line was crossed, but he resigned. The stuff Trump says when people say something like Mitt Romney, that no, no Republicans come to defend them. See, my thing is, is that I think that while the Republicans tout this independent message for black people, right. they're doing things systematically that are doing, are, like you said, are the opposite. Like, so when we look at the Voting Rights Act, monumental legislation, the Republican Supreme Court gutted it. And since then, there have been 1,600 polling places in poor and black communities gone, which means longer wait time for us, longer wait time for people who are getting off work. They got to stand in line for four or five hours. So these are the things that Republicans tout and they say, well, Democratic cities and like you said, Pelosi. But then they're systematically taking away votes. They're gerrymandering. They're doing all these things in the in the dark of night. Yes, Baltimore, those places, one party, you see the result. But the Democrat, what I what I advocate for is say, I believe they're both instituting racist policies. Um, but the Republican Party, they have one of their chief strategists and their platform hasn't changed since Reagan. Those policies out of his own mouth directly, directly affect us. He said it, he meant it, and they're still strategizing. Has there, has there been anything that Trump policy-wise has created that has been racist towards black people or has negatively affected us? Or do you feel like you're talking about the party itself, which He's goes back to Reagan? Party. I'm talking about the party from Reagan till now. But also when you look at uh, just a, an example, the tax cuts, people do not realize when you cut taxes. So like you said, charter schools are an option and the voucher can follow people mm-hmm. you know, to where they need to go. Right. But if you cut taxes, in a neighborhood like, let's say, Midland, that means my kids are getting less to go to school in their town, in their town, because that's that's reducing the rate that of uh, real estate taxes and things like that. So when you cut taxes, it does affect us. As and I'm not saying that itself is a racist act because he's trying. He said he was spurring the economy and all those things like that. Um, but you look at that and like the stock market. I give you a prime example. Stock market being all time high, our community majority don't invest in the stock market, so that's not affecting us. That's Whose not fault is us. that though? That that is ours. To our fault. That, yep, that is ours fault. Right. Because we need to learn financial literacy. Him and I were talking about right. that. Absolutely. So we look at that. Um, the, there are individuals in the Democratic Party that uh, individual black people too. But the thing is, is that the messaging I believe is more inclusive, which makes it more appealing. So, I, mean? so I watched the Democratic National Convention, and I definitely can see that. Mm-hmm. Even back to when they put the Ghana scarves on. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and I made an episode about this because yeah. I feel like they're not fooling me. Yeah. Right. Um, when, I, when, when I watched bo- both parties, mm-hmm. both conventions was just a show. Yeah, it was. And was I, I, I wonder, do you feel like uh, the Democrats... Is, is there any I know the Democrats, they 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 appear mm-hmm. inclusive, but what are they what have they really created for these groups? And, and you know what? Coming along. And that's where when we look at that pyramid that I sent, uh, there have been programs 
that have been started. And I'm not going to say Republican or Democrat simply because in times the parties have switched. One was conservative, one was uh, 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 progressive. But there have been policies that have been used by white landowners, by white farmers to get that jump start that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. But now the Republicans who are, who are conservative are saying that's socialism when it comes to helping people of color. You know, I looked at Joe Biden's uh, Black America agenda. So the one portion says prioritizing small business loans and grants for women, minorities, people of color. Okay. Now, somebody would read that and say that's socialism. They're giving out money and they're prioritizing over somebody else. But when the GI Bill was passed, white soldiers came home and they were able to get that jump start. So my thing is, is that for us, these policies are out there. First, it takes education to, to make sure that they know about them, that we as a group of people know about them. But also, it's veiled under the idea of socialism now when it wasn't when it was done for for white so the democrats uh, they're 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 trying to pass something that gives us a jump start yes yes they help with small businesses and cuz i read it before i came here no uh, before okay. I came. go ahead go ahead, no, go ahead. Oh, I was yeah i was i was reading his platform and so what he wants to do is he wants to provide grants and loans and prioritize that's the key word prioritize uh, people of color women well, minorities well my thing is you know um and we'll go back a couple of things I wanted to make reference to, but yeah. let's go with this one right now. Mm-hmm. Um, you you know these type of programs, welfare mm-hmm. was a Democrat program that was, you know, designed to propel the black family, but then they put in there how the no man in the house clause, right, which essentially broke up families. And if you're if you're if you really were intent on helping, mm-hmm. then you would allow that family to stay a nuclear family. While receiving the benefits, while the father works to get ahead, but they didn't see. So again, it's a it's a veiled cover that we want to help you by giving you something. But see, what if you look at the Democrat when they give, if they take it, and to me, it's never been. If you look at them going back to the Confederacy, it's because that's what's Democrat. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, people. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. don't, don't know, know that. that. That's right. That the Confederates who fought to keep the slaves. Jefferson Davis was a Democrat. They were all Democrats, right? So, you know, but that's why I think they're tearing down. It's not pointing at you. I'm just yeah. speaking in general. <laughs> I understand. You know, that's why I think they're tearing down these yeah. Confederate statues okay. because they want to erase their part of history. But again, if you look at these socialistic programs and these, you know, help jumpstart, they're not effective. You know, and going back when you said those poor Republican white neighborhoods, mm-hmm. They're really, if you look at their lifestyle, Democrat. They're on welfare. They're all on welfare and subsidized programs. And so it's funny. They champion Republican, but you live Democrat. That's so true. He's well, 100% right. This is what we'll do. S- send me that uh, the proposal, that grant, so we can, okay. and, and we'll break it down okay. and see. Because I think there's a difference between a grant that encourages entrepreneurship mm-hmm. and lifting yourself up and helping. So I definitely want to yep. see what it's he's Biden's, putting forward. Side, yep. um, another thing that I noticed when watching the Democratic convention was they almost are pushing that this is a third term for Obama. Mm-hmm. That's what I put sure. on one of the notes. Yep, yep. So the question not only goes back to what has Biden done over his last, what has he been in, a 47, 41 40, years? 47, goodness, I think. Yeah, 47, I so think it is. So him 47, but let's, let's focus on these eight years of Obama because that's what they're pushing what has Obama done uh, for black people? Okay, you want- or we'll say we'll say Obama and Biden. You okay. know what I mean? 